and welcome to the Female DIY Musician Weekly Live Video Training. My name is Isabel. I am here to give you some straight talking, useful and empowering trainings every week. Um, I founded the Female DIY Musician because I wanted to help more women get into music. I'm a musician, I'm a DIY musician, and I know that it's only through taking control and make, playing an active part in the future of my career and taking those risks and releasing my own music and going that DIY path. That was the only way I ever started to become um, the musician that I wanted to be and to make an income from it and um, just to have the success that I've had. So um, you're very welcome. I hope that this is useful to you today. If you're in the place that I was years ago where you're not sure what, what to do and you're not sure how to um, move forward and you know even when you start becoming more um, successful and sure of yourself you still sometimes hit those blocks you are so welcome my friend and um, yeah just get active get engaged in the group and get engaged in today's video so today's video is all about how to shut down patronizing interactions so I know that for a lot of us in the female do have musician tribe Facebook group and other people that are um, you know, active with me on Instagram and other spaces, I know that this is an issue that a lot of us face as women in music. I know that it's an issue that actually quite a few people face, even if you don't identify as being female, but it's definitely something that women um, have to deal with quite a lot. And I wanted to do a, I wanted to do a live on this now because we're coming to the end of 2019 and I know that for a lot of people, they'll be thinking about the next, the year coming up. And I want to make sure that um, I'm giving you trainings that are gonna prepare you to have the best year that you can in 2020. And one of the things that I think is really important therefore is how you handle people that are either actively or subconsciously belittling you, putting you down, patronizing you, and kind of keeping you in a place that maybe you've grown out of long, 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 long ago. So that's exactly what this is about, because I want to make sure that 2020, like I said, is a year where you can all move into it and think, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to I'm going to really stand my ground and stand up for myself and I'm going to go for things that I care about and go for things that really matter to me and not let somebody talk me down from it and not let somebody get in the way of that. So that's exactly what this training is all, all, all about. If you're watching live, then do say hello. I want to know who's here. I want to know your opinions and I want to know your experiences of being patronized um, and also what you do about it because one of the most important things of a, group, of a group like this is sharing those tools and those tips and supporting each other. So if you have any things that you've tried that have really worked, share them in the comments, please, because I can tell you that they are so, so useful, not just for the, people, the other people in the group, but for me too, so I can learn from you. So today, um, like I said, we'll be going into this. I'm going to go into it in two levels, really. I can see Valerie's watching. Hello, Valerie. It's lovely to have you here. There's kind of two levels that I'm going to go into today. The first one is the kind of surface level stuff. And that's really the stuff that's like, what's one of the best things you can do to just um, deal with this in the moment, deal with being patronized in the moment. But I'm also going to go down into something that's more important, um, which is how do, how do you react to this internally? What's going on internally? So we're going to look at both of those things. Um, and firstly, before we get into this, I wanted to just um, say that if you are interested in growing your confidence and growing your sense of, um, I think, kind of um, momentum and um, optimism and excitement about 2020, then do join the Music Goals waitlist. We're going to be opening the doors to Music Goals in just a few weeks. I'm really, really excited about this. I have loved running Music Goals. It'll be the third time I'm opening the doors and it just keeps going from strength to strength. So if you know that you would like some support and some coaching and somebody kind of walking that path with you for a few months at the beginning of next year, then this is the program for you, no doubt. So you've got the link um, just with this video so you can have a look and sign up for the waitlist and then you'll be the first to know when the doors go open and you will get a little window where you can grab your place before anyone else does. 
So Valerie says, I recently started a collective with two other bands. I'm just going to hop in the comments now, um, just before we get started. I recently started a collective with two other bands to positively reinforce and help each other, but mostly to create a warm atmosphere where both musicians and the audience feels welcome. That's great, Valerie. That's really good. And that really relates to our last topic last week, which is about starting a creative collective or being part of a creative collective. And I was talking about how important those communities and those groups are um, to making you feel more supported and also just generating more creativity and more ideas and what you're doing and challenging yourself as well. So that's really, really cool that you've done that. Um, Valerie says, I don't want to fight. We don't want to fight each other, but combine fan bases and create a big fan base that way. Yeah, that's really good. So I think that what Valerie's doing is something that if you're not already doing it yourself, you should really consider where you think, where can I create those creative groups? And this feeds into today's topic in that when you have those communities and those groups and those places where you feel that, that you've got that kind of non-judgmental but also challenging space, you can then feel more confident when you are dealing with people who are not supportive and who are maybe subconsciously or consciously um, actually trying to kind of put you in a place that you've grown out of long ago. So I think those fan bases can be really, I mean, those co collectives can be really, really powerful for this topic today. So let's get into this topic. Um, if you've got experiences, um, like Valerie, comment, um, share, and I'd love to hear from you and you can just keep commenting as we go. So um, I want to start first with explaining what we're talking about. So some people may be thinking, well, I'm not sure whether we've been patronised. I don't know whether someone was just being a dick or something like that. So the difference is between these things is that... Um, You've got two, I would say roughly I'd split them into two different separate um, categories of patronising. So on the one hand you've got patronising from someone who is quite innocent and um, you know maybe just doesn't realise that you have quite a lot of prior no knowledge and they may not realise that actually they have a kind of subconscious bias about the fact that perhaps it's because you're a woman, perhaps it's because you're a young woman, Perhaps it's because you're a young black woman. Perhaps it's because you're a young blonde woman. Perhaps it's because you're an older woman. So there's all these kind of ways that we, we categorize people in our heads and, and we subconsciously, a lot of the time, um, start having these presumptions about what those people know, what those people have done, and what those people could in future understand and achieve. So um, that's the kind of first one is that, um, person that maybe is not realizing that they are patronizing you and they're not realizing that they're coming with to you with an unconscious bias now there's another kind of patronizing which is someone who is actively using it as a way to put you in your place so they're actively using it as a way to make sure that you do not move forward that you do not certainly don't move past them and that they stay in the driver's seat and they stay in that controlling position so there's two distinct types and I think it's really important to be clear about those because then when you get in those situations where you feel patronized, I can give you a really good ind indication of how you need to be reacting to that because I would react to the first as in the subconscious or unconscious um, bias and just kind of it's maybe a bit naive and ignorant where somebody just does not realize that they're being patronizing. I'd react, react to that very differently to the person who is actively wanting to put me in my place and using it as a kind of power technique. So I hope that makes sense. Just give me a, a yes or a thumbs up if that makes sense for you. Um, so hopefully that's um, clear. And then then you can kind of move on and think, right, how do you deal with those situations? So I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of split them into two. So this is the first part of our live where I'm kind of giving you the surface level stuff of like, how could, how could you react in the moment? And we're talking about shutting it down. So we're talking about not reacting in a way that is, you know, I've got my coffee here, by the way, I, I kind of need my coffee today. Um, not reacting in a way that is, say, um, aggressive, when actually that person doesn't it doesn't warrant aggression because that person was not meaning to do you any harm they didn't realize as opposed to when somebody is meaning to do you harm and maybe you need to react in a different way so 
if I take the first example where somebody doesn't mean to, to react in a particular way, I would honestly, um, on the one hand, I would say in terms of shutting it down, you can make a joke. Um, it depends on your personality. It depends on your relationship, but it could be something quite lighthearted, like, oh, by the way, I'm going to save your time there. I know that already. So that could be one way that you kind of um, inter intercept it. Another way that you can intercept it, if that person doesn't know you and you're not confident about kind of making it lighthearted and jokey, you could, in a more serious way, say, thank you so much for um, wanting to explain that to me. To be honest, I actually already know. And, um, you know, you can just save your time there. We can skip over that bit. Um, and you know, you know, and then move the conversation on that way. So I think whatever it is, just saying, look, I'll, I'm going to save you and you and my time. Um, I actually know what you're talking about already, but thanks for you know wanting to explain it to me. But I've got it. We're all good. Let's go. And that can be enough for people to be like, oh, okay, oh god, okay, shit, like that was a bit silly of me. So sometimes people might get quite embarrassed because they just may not realise. And it's just about kind of calmly putting it out there of like, actually, do you know what? I've got this, I, I understand. Sometimes people can keep doing it. And that's when it's really important to keep saying, I understand what you're talking about. I, I get, I understand the concept of this, this and this. What is not happening here is you aren't acknowledging this. So it's hard to kind of say that as a scenario, but sometimes it's actually about the other person's intelligence. So sometimes that person is not intelligent enough to realize that you understand something, but you're actually making a more complex point. So that can happen. Um, so for example, um, I'm gonna give you an example now. Now, which example am I gonna give? Um, I'm good, okay. So I started kind of working with a manager um, once upon a time. And the, our first conversation got into whether there was a gender issue in music and he believed there wasn't. And I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't understand how somebody couldn't see that in some way, you know, just in some way, shape or form that there obviously had been an issue. There still was an issue. Even if those issues have changed slightly, he just, he couldn't see it. Um, and he kept kind of mansplaining to me, um, you know, the way that the industry worked. And I kept having to say, yes, I understand that but what isn't working or isn't fair or isn't okay is this, this, and this. And he just couldn't get his head around it. He couldn't see the complexities. All he could see was, but if something is supposed to do this, then it does that. And he kept explaining to me what it was supposed to do. And I kept having to say, I understand that. But in reality, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. So he was quite patronizing in that he kept kind of explaining to me these nuts and bolts of, um, like how releasing works, et cetera, et cetera, and kind of trying to make the point that therefore it's just a, a, a clear playing field. Everyone has the same opportunities. And I kept having to kind of step in and say, I understand the concepts that you're telling me, but in reality, this is not the case for these reasons. And what was going on was that he just could not understand it. And I think that either subconsciously or not, that was his way of coping with not being able to understand what I was talking about. He just kept patronizing me and mansplaining to me. And actually, I think probably maybe I was a bit intimidating to him, even though he was older than me, um, more experienced in terms of, you know, being on that side of the, of the industry. But he was not able to get those finer, more detailed points. And I think, um, so what I'm saying is, I think sometimes even if somebody doesn't get it, it's really important to keep saying, I understand the concept. What I am saying is this, this, and this, and just to keep going. And, and if that's not working, then walk away, if you're able to walk away. So though, that would be my kind of surface level. How do you deal with somebody um, who has a very kind of almost innocent or no harm meant unconscious bias? They're just subconsciously patronizing you. I would be really clear, really honest, and just say, look, you, you don't need to tell me this, I understand it. So let's just save our time and skip on. Like, I get that. And sometimes those people will just immediately be like, whoa, sorry, okay, oh God, that's really embarrassing. If I really patronized you there? And you'd be like, yeah, a little bit. You know, and you can just move on. Sometimes some people just will not take the hint and you get stuck into a kind of 
like antlers locking horns type thing and this is what happened with me and this this manager once upon a time and you will have to just keep saying mm -hmm, i understand yeah got that one loud and clear yeah i understand that and um, it may be that you don't work with that person and maybe that that person is not able to catch up with you in that sense and in a way that's meaningful so let's move on to the um this situation where somebody is actually meaning to um, put you in your place. It's a form of control, it's a form of aggression. What do you do when that happens? So um, I'm gonna kind of give a scenario where somebody, um, you say, maybe you say to, in a band, do you know what, I'd love to write the next song actually. I, like, let's say you haven't been writing any of the songs and you say, do you know what, I'd love to write the next song, I've got a really good idea. And I think it's really gonna work for what we're doing actually. And then your bandmate, who you know, maybe is the person that has written a lot of the songs before, says, yeah, do you know what? Um, I think it might be best if we wrote it together because I'm not sure, um, it might be a bit much kind of you writing the whole song on your own and it's, and it's your first time. I think it's best if I write it with you. That could be quite patronizing and it's a way of also kind of keeping you in your place and then keeping that control. Um, Sometimes it's not that, but sometimes, you know, that's how it might feel. And if you know that person, that's my, that might be how it comes across. And it could be that even if you say, actually, no, do you know what? I, I really would like to give it a go. I think, I think it's going to be really good. And then they say something like, no, honestly, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're, you're, you're good enough, you know, or something like that. Or you write a song and you bring it to the band and then this person says, this is a really, really good song. Do you know, this is a really good song. And, and what you've done here is actually really clever. So without realizing it, what you've done is this, this, and this. And then you're like, yeah, I know. And that's really, really frustrating. And so if that person is kind of, that's their, that's their mode of operandi, that's how they're communicating with you. And that's how you can tell that's how they're putting you in your, their, your place. Then maybe you need to have a different tactic. Now let me take a sip of my coffee and let me take, let me just take a look at the comments. So um, is any of this ringing true for you? Is anybody like you watching this and thinking, oh my God, yeah, I have had those unconscious um, kind of patronizing comments where people don't realize they're doing it. And have you found a good way to shut that down? And do you think what I talked about would help with shutting that down of just being really clear of like, I've got this, you don't need to tell me twice. I've already learned this years ago. Let's just save our time and skip, skip past that bit, please. I can see that Evelyn's joined. Hello, Evelyn, it's lovely to have you here. So I'm gonna have another sip of my coffee before I move on. Mm. So we get to this aggressive, more controlling type. Now I think if somebody is being like that, so that that situation where you brought a song in, you've written a song for the band they they play through the song and then they they are really patronizing and they say oh um actually yeah this this is a good song actually well done this is a good song and what you've done here is actually quite interesting because without realizing it you've actually done this that's cool oh well done you know it's that kind of patronizing thing um so I think that, that this is a bad situation. So Valerie says, I'm so glad my band is not like that. <laughs> I know, I know. And your band may not be like that. And I hope it's not like that. So this is just an example. Um, and, and but Valerie says, but, there's always a but, but our pianist is the most experienced. He knows most music theory. And I don't know, some other band members don't. Um, and I don't, some other band members don't. So yeah, the, there can be somebody that takes a role and they can be quite patronizing about one particular aspect. Um, so let's take, let's go back to our example. And you know, if that happens a lot, if that's happening a lot, or even if it happens a w once in quite an embarrassing, um, you know, maybe even aggressive way, I would definitely, definitely approach this differently. So I would um, maybe, if, it's, if there's lots of people there, I would actually now probably say to that person, can I just have a chat with you outside actually? And I'd go outside and I'd say, I just want to make you aware that you were really patronizing there. And I don't know whether it's conscious or whether you realized you're doing it, 
but it really undermined me. I am well aware that this song is very good. Don't put yourself down, okay? You know that I want you to start believing in yourselves or keep believing in yourselves more. So I know that this song is good and I'm glad that you like it, but I purposefully have written it in a way that makes it good. So I understand what's going on in this song that makes it good. So please don't patronize me um, and please respect me as, part, as, a, as a colleague of yours, you know. And then I'd go back into the room and then I would be my shit hot self and lead the band in playing that song amazingly. So that's one way that you could tackle that. I would never be, I'd never be scared of removing somebody from a more public situation if they're patronizing you and just being really upfront and saying, um, I'm finding that you're being really patronizing. I don't know whether you're conscious of this, but um, I, really do, I really want you to stop talking to me like this. Um, I want you to show me res respect, um, like I show you respect. And, you know, I'm glad that you're, uh, you know, maybe in this situation, I'm glad you like the song, but you don't have to patronize, patronize me by explaining to me what is happening in my song because I wrote it. You know, so you have to be really like, sometimes bring it, pulling someone out of that more public situation can give you a bit more um, privacy to be really honest with that person. And it could be that that person genuinely doesn't realize that they are being that offensive. And it could be that having that conversation outside of that group is better because they will feel less threatened and they're less, less likely to then say and get defensive in front of people. So I think that could be quite good. It might be that it's happening and there's nobody else there. So in that case, I would always just immediately say, look, I don't like the way that you're talking to me. Um, I think that you're being imp incredibly patronizing and you know, just be really honest. Now there could be some people you don't feel comfortable doing that with, or there could be some situations where you just feel too emotional about it. So it's a very emotional experience, obviously. And there could be times where you just feel way too um, backed into a corner or angry or confused or anxious. And in those situations, I would say, um, I, I need to leave this conversation now um, and I will, I'd like you to, you know, think about the way that this conversation has gone down and I'd like us to, um, you know, have like meet up or talk again later when I'm ready to talk about how condescending you've been, you know? So give yourself some time, buy yourself some time. So in, if it's in front of a group, buy yourself some space. And if it's one-on-one um, -on -one and you're feeling it very emotional or, you know, anxious, angry, buy yourself some time. Um, but I would never just let it go. And I've let, one, I've let things go like that before. Um, and what happens is you t they tick over in your head and they niggle away at your insecurities. They're like, maybe they're right, maybe I'm not actually a very good songwriter. Maybe they're right, maybe I'm not clever enough to do that course. Maybe they're right, maybe I'm not um, technically minded enough to, to produce this song myself. Maybe they're right, I'm not business savvy enough to release this album myself. So just don't, don't let it go because it will tick along in your head. And the reason, one, one of the reasons it's ticking along in your head is not just because it's an unpleasant experience and not just because it may have been um, niggling away at little insecurities you've already got, but because you have left something unresolved. You've left that interaction unresolved and you need to resolve it, even if the resolution is unsatisfying or the resolution is an argument, you still need to resolve it. You still need to, to say, in response to whatever patronizing remark or statement they've made, I do not agree with you and you have condescended me and you've underestimated me. So that's definitely something to think about. Um, I'm gonna just hop back into the comments. Valerie says, but we're quite creative. However, sometimes we make up things that are quite weird when you look at it from a music theory perspective. So the pianist can sometimes be a little patronizing. Ah, uh, Okay, so in Valerie's band, they're quite experimental, but the pianist can be a bit patronizing because it's not fitting in with um, music theory conventions, I'm guessing. So, but we're good friends. So we're just 
like shut up nick let's just try it okay so that's the thing if you, if you are good friends with someone you can be um quite kind of jokey with them and that can be a qu quite a good way of shutting things down just making a joke out of it and then most of the time it works or he helps out and we change it up a bit so we end up with something nice i don't think it's important to try when you think you've made something good i think it's important that your band members help you get better but also give you the space for it and complimenting each other might be just as important as giving each other critique for sure and we often forget to do this we often forget to say i really really love what you're doing with the guitar in that bit i really really love um how it feels when we're harmonizing together i really love the beat that you've got in that bit we we kind of often forget to do that we just um, presume that everybody knows it's working because we've all been playing music together but what's really important is to yeah to, to kind of acknowledge people when they're actually doing things re that you really love and that you think are going really well not just criticizing yourselves so that's a really good point um i'm going to take more coffee Hmm. So, um, so now we come to the slightly kind of deeper stuff. So that was surface level stuff, as in this is how you could react in the moment. But the deeper stuff is so much more important and will help you with the surface level stuff. So the deeper stuff is thinking about how is this person's behavior towards me triggering certain things in me? Because let's be honest, if somebody is patronizing they will only that their, their words will only have merit or worth or meaning if you in some way believe them so if you in some way in some part of your psyche believes that too that's the only way that those words will have merit and will have meaning and will actually take form in the world so the most important thing is that we work on that self-confidence I know that from you know my own experiences and working with so many women in music now, I know that confidence is one of the biggest problems and that we are so aware of our flaws and not, not at all aware of our qualities and our strengths. Um, we downplay them, we chalk them up to you know luck, chance, happenstance. Um, we, we, we kind of downplay the importance of them but actually a lot of the time we have incredible qualities and incredible strengths um, that are way far excel our expectations and sometimes other people's. So the most important thing in this is that kind of deep stuff of how do you perceive yourself as a musician? How easy is it for you to come up with five qualities that you have that you feel really strongly about and you're really proud about in your in yourself that are going to support you in your music how easy is it for you to come up with five flaws that are going to sabotage your music i bet the latter is easier it's easier for most people it's easier for me so that's really important to think how how confident am i in myself how much do i cheerlead myself on how much do i champion myself um, and we come back to that collective idea that you know being part of a supportive collective will build your confidence i i can guarantee you that and what you put into that collective will pay dividends in what you get out as well. So, you know, we come back to that idea of being part of that group, that community, even if it's for a short time, it can really reboot um, your sense of self-worth and your sense of identity. But when people come at us with those patronizing, condescending comments, whether they're meaning to, whether they're subconscious, the real issue is what is it triggering in you? What does it do? What, does, what comes up for you when that happens? And if what's coming up is even a tiny bit of, yeah, you're probably right, you're probably right, then you are going to deal with that patronizing person so, so, so much more ineffectively than if what comes up is, no, I don't think you're right there. Or yeah, I am flawed, but I have also got lots to offer. You know, then you're gonna come at that patronizing person with way more guts and way more confidence and way more clarity. Because isn't that the problem? Isn't that the problem that when people patronize us, clarity goes out the window? When people patronize us, we get confused and we get angry and we get anxious and we get worried and we kind of shrink, but also feel pissed off. 
And it's all these confusing emotions together. I think that's one of the hardest things about being patronised or condescended. It's a very confusing, overwhelming situation where a lot of the time people kind of go into freeze mode of like, oh, what, what's happening? Oh my God, they're doubting me. Oh my God, is everyone else doubting me? Oh my God, are they kind of right? Oh my God, I feel a bit kind of upset or I feel angry. They're not right. How dare they do this to me? And we kind of go into freeze mode where there's all these things going on in our head. But... I, c I really can't uh, stress enough how if you feel if you feel insecure that about your ability about your worth about your entitlement to be ambitious to work hard to take risks to achieve stuff if you're in any way um, in com under confident about that then you are going to find that when people patronize you you get very kind of frozen and confused because actually or very emotionally triggered so for some people, it could be they get very angry. For some people, it could, could be that they get very, very angry at themselves. I'm like, oh, oh God, I'm so stupid that I would have thought I could have done that. They're right. I'm not ready to do that, et cetera, et cetera. So the really important thing is that we actually get confident in ourselves. And then when those people mansplain or patronize, it won't matter as much. And it means that when you're not as emotionally triggered, because you know that actually what they're saying isn't true or what they're saying is true but it's no reason to condescend you if you're if you're confident like that then you you don't have all those emotions coming in clouding your clarity and then you have clarity in those moments and you can say do you know what actually i i know that already and um just for the record that's quite patronizing but it's okay let's move on and we'll get on to the proper work you know and you can kind of like just handle somebody like that and some people won't like that and again, you know, if you're insecure about who you are, you're, what you're entitled to do, say, be, think, achieve and work towards, then somebody not liking you being like that is going to be quite triggering for you again. But when you're confident about what you're entitled to want, do, achieve, dream, goal, like work towards, then you're much more likely to be, okay, you don't like me acting like that, that's interesting. Why do you think that is? You know, and, and maybe have I been aggressive towards you? So it may feel like you've been kind of, you shut down the, their ideas or something like that. And you can have more of a kind of open conversation about it because we don't all, always react perfectly to people being patronizing or people being lots of ways. I don't always react perfectly. Um, and I'm not always as confident as, you know, the advice I'm giving in this live. It's definitely my best advice. And it's definitely what I've found um, more and more as I've got older. Do I always feel like that? No. Do I have days, weeks, months where I'm questioning myself a lot and where I feel very insecure? Yes. But I can tell you that that deeper work of really, really appreciating your strengths, what you have to offer, how that's going to support your music career and your ability to learn. You always have the ability to learn. So you could, don't ever forget that. So even if you don't know something right now, you can learn it. And no one should judge you or patronize you because you haven't got there yet, because you've got way ahead of that person in other ways that they can't imagine. I can guarantee you that that's always the case. We all have different gifts. We all have different lives and we've all done, gone on different journeys. So I think the point is um, ha being able to respond um, without being triggered because when it's not triggering insecurities in us gives you clarity in those moments to then deal with that person in a assertive but definitely not aggressive or um, you know un unconstructive way and you can just be very clear and say okay I think you're patronizing me here and I think maybe you've overlooked that I've done this this and this so um, you know, let, I'm going to presume that wasn't, you didn't mean that. And let's just move on because I do know this, you know, so that's, that's a way to kind of handle it. There's a really, really good example. And God, if somebody's watching and they know what, where the link is for this, please post it because it's a really, really good example. It's very funny where, um, I think they were in, oh Jesus, I'm going to get all of this wrong. They were in a, um, it's two kind of very important ministers in the European Union, I think, in a debate. And they were in the European Parliament 
and there was a man who was saying about a woman well you know it's all very well and good her having these ideas about the economic future etc etc et but she has to my knowledge she has no experience in economics she has no background in business she has no qualifications in economics and so she she shouldn't have an opinion on this the, the woman gets up and says i just like to correct you that i'm actually a professor of economics and uh, it's just crazy it's ridiculous i mean someone who has been there's such a good example of someone who's been so underestimated there but she is so professional about it and so and you know you watch her and you're like damn that's good that's good she just gets up and says actually i'm a professor of economics and i've been studying and, and writing and leading research on economics for three decades and you know etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean i've kind of slightly made some of the, the rest of it up but i'm going to find that link and post it to you because it really is a good example of how she is she's probably dealt with people like that time and time and time again now she shouldn't have had to but she pro she probably has and over the years you can tell she has had to really get confident um, maybe she always was, but if she wasn't, she's had to really get confident about who she is, the strength she has, what she's bringing, and that everyone is flawed. All of us are flawed. We all make mistakes. It's hard sometimes to accept that. It's hard sometimes to not think that therefore we we need to kind of not have a voice or maybe we need to just give up because we've made one mistake or we're not quite getting something. But everyone has flaws and everyone makes mistakes and everyone finds it hard to get their head around certain things. So she is confident in that and she's also confident in saying actually you're wrong and and it's her kind of version of just want to save everyone's time here by saying i do actually know a lot about this and you've been very patronizing and um let's just move on you know and that's her kind of that's her way of saying that and i think she did it very very well so it's worth watching that so to summarize We've got two types, main types of patronizing, condescending behavior. One type is subconscious, the other type is conscious, and people mean to do it, to put us in our place. With the first type, I would absolutely just be really honest, maybe even jokey and say, okay, hang on, hang on, I've just got to tell you, I know all this already. Um, thank you for taking the time to explain it to me, but I just want to save our time and just say, I know it already, so we can just move on. You could also say, look, if you don't know somebody that well and you, you're starting to work with them, look, um, I don't want to be kind of funny, but I feel like you're really patronizing me right now. And you may not mean to do it, but I do actually already know um, what you're talking about. So it's all good, but let's just move on. And a lot of the time those people will say, oh God, I'm really sorry. Oh God, I'm really sorry. I, I can't believe I was so patronizing. God, I, I'm, that's awful. The second type is when somebody is meaning to put you in their place. And it really is coming from a place of insecurity and in, not on their part. And in that situation, I'd either buy yourself some space, take yourselves out of the room if you're in front of people and say, I, I found that last interaction incredibly patronizing. Um, I don't know if you realized or not, I feel like you did, but um, I think that if we're gonna keep working together, you're gonna to have to really sort that out. And we, I want you to treat me with respect and know that I, I am ambitious, I do have ideas, and I'm gonna share them, you know, whatever it is that you need to say, or buy yourself some time. So if you feel really emotionally triggered, which is understandable by an interaction like that, say to that person, I'm gonna to have to take a time out here. Um, I don't like the way that this conversation's going. Can we um, check in later on and have a discussion about this? But for now, I'd really like to just take take some time away. You know, and I would I would just be really clear on that because whenever you get emotionally triggered, you often don't come out with your most kind of constructive, resourceful responses. So I'd always listen to that. Um, and then just to really work on the deep stuff, because it doesn't matter who is, um, you know, coming at you and their, their intentions behind it. If you are confident in your abilities and your strengths and also in your um, entitlement to be flawed and make mistakes, then you will not take that kind of crap from people. But you will also not get so emotionally triggered. So you have the clarity to respond to it in a way that is constructive and assertive um, and you'll be able to just build much better relationships and there will be people that won't like that and then you don't work with them um, you don't want to be with people who 
can't understand when somebody is coming to them with that kind of feedback that they feel patronized you if, if they can't understand that and they can't amend the way that they're acting around you then yeah i think you would have to work with somebody else so that brings us to the end of today's live it's been lovely to have um you join me and to have people commenting and liking i'm really really glad that you enjoyed this one i know it's a really important topic um and there's one more comment that i have not seen valerie says and even if you did screw up on stage people don't have to patronize you because of it no people do not have to patronize you because of it i hate when especially other musicians just come up to you to tell you you screwed something up or talk behind your back about it. It's okay to point something out that went wrong, but not in a patronizing way that is meant to put you down instead of help you get better. Totally, Valerie, totally. And you know, anyone that's experienced that will know how fucking annoying that is. Um, and yeah, I think some of the best ways to respond to that are just saying, yeah, I made a mistake, but I guess that's just the process, isn't it? You know, just be really clear on what that creative process is, that is part of the creative process. That, that part of becoming a really good musician is not getting everything right all the time because you will not learn and you will not grow and you will just stay in a comfort zone. Learning to be a great musician is, is embracing making mistakes. So if somebody said that to me, I'd say, yeah, I did make a mistake, but it's part of the process, isn't it? And, you know, I'm, I'm all good with that. The rest of it was really fucking shit hot. <laughs> And sometimes when someone is being a dick, I would be, I would be very kind of confident back, but each to their own. So I hope that this is in some way helpful. Um, and I hope that if you're thinking that you would like more support with anything to do with confidence, to do with self-esteem, to do with being part of more of a community, more of a collective, you will join the waitlist on Music Goals and hopefully sign up to Music Goals when we um, launch at the end of the month because it is, it's been an amazing program and I promise that you will really, really love it. Um, and Valerie says, thanks for the live as well. It was really helpful. I'm really glad, Valerie. Cool. Okay, so if you're watching the replay, do let us know what your opinions are on this. Let us know your experiences and let us know any tools or tips you've got for dealing with patronizing musician colleagues or people in the industry. And I will see you next week for another totally awesome female DIY musician weekly live. Take care till then. Bye.